thanks a lot, Colleen, and uh, uh, thanks, uh, Annie, uh, for uh, inviting me to participate in this uh, uh, virtual uh, program with the Bass Museum and uh, Cultural Center. And uh, what I'll do is I, I did I do have a little uh, PowerPoint, so I'm going to share that so people can follow along with some um, um, you know, some some images that I've put together. And I do see and and you know thanks thanks for the, the folks uh, who've uh, joined us tonight uh, as well. Um, I do recognize. Uh, a few names out there. We have some some NABO folks, so I'll be, I'll be calling them out uh, during the presentation. Um, well, I'll just start with a, a little bit uh, about uh, myself. My name is uh, Philippe uh, Ashiri Togarai, and uh, Ashiri Togarai. My father brought that name over uh, when he immigrated from the uh, Bass village of Orsaise. You see the the church here. And Orsice is uh, located in the southern part of uh, Lower Navarre with the red star here. And I think most people kind of recognize the, the Basque country uh, in between, uh, located in between uh, Spain and uh, France. Uh, my mother was uh, born and raised in San Francisco, just like me. And um, uh, her maiden name was Echecopar. And her uh, mother and father immigrated from the uh, Shibetoan uh, province. It's the smallest province in the Basque uh, country. And so my, my maternal grandmother came from uh, Maule, Shibetoa, the capital of that uh, province. I'm, uh, I grew up in uh, San Francisco, uh, went to school locally. I've been working for a mutual funds company uh, for uh, a while, headquartered in San Mateo and uh, married with uh, two adult children and a, a daughter that's a sophomore in a uh, high school. And um, yeah, yeah, Ashuri Togarai, one, one of those Basque names, it means the little fox up high. Asheri, the fox, told little, Garai, uh, up high. And I've been involved with the Basque community in San Francisco for roughly uh, 20 years uh, with the Basque Cultural Center. You see the handball court uh, here. Uh, the Bass Club, uh, which is a charter member of NABO, and the Basque Educational Organization, which is a uh, educational arm of uh, the center. And I've been involved with NABO since about 2002. So we'll, we'll just start uh, as we usually do, kind of start at the at the beginning. Um, okay, good. And um, yeah, how did how did NABO uh, start? A lot of clubs were in existence uh, since the uh, early uh, 20th century. I know the New York uh, Usko Echea was founded in uh, 1913, and several clubs uh, in the West. Uh, I know uh, Boise was uh, early 20th century. Uh, there were a couple in California during World War II. So you had all these clubs uh, spread out all over the Western United States. And um, in uh, 1967, the, the state of Nevada, they started a uh, Basque studies program in 1968. It was headed by uh, Bill Douglas. And we, we see a picture of him uh, here. He was the director through uh, 2000. And one of the first researchers that he brought on board was uh, John Bilbao, and he's photographed right here with uh, Bill Douglas. And one of their first major works was uh, the landmark uh, book, uh, Americanuac, that was that Bill Douglas and Jan Bilbao wrote. And when they were researching it in South America, they, they were in uh, Argentina uh, for uh, several weeks, and they visited many clubs, and they uh, learned about Argentina's a federation called uh, FEBA, the Federation of uh, Basque Entities in Argentina. And when, when they got back, uh, you know, John Bilbao was really, you know, excited about this idea. He thought it would be good to have that in the United States as well to help uh, promote uh, Basque uh, initiatives. Bill Douglas was a little more cool on the idea uh, because he, he really didn't see that as fitting in uh, with the, the research aspect of the program, the, the Bass Studies uh, program. Um, 
but they did after a while they did uh, work with the local reno bass club uh, janet inda was involved with that and they did uh get a couple people from uh boise and san francisco they had a few meetings at the basque uh, center for bass studies library and that was in uh, 1971. Um, right around that same time in uh, Idaho, um, the, um, well, I have the logo here, the Department of Education in the state of Idaho, they, uh, were, they successfully received a grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities for the purpose of Basque educational activities. The, and these activities, so they, they, they received the grant, I think it was something like $50,000. They received this grant and they, um, they had a um, structure called the Idaho Bass Studies Center that organized the, ac the educational activities that the, they received the grants from. And um, Miren Rementeria Achtiak was the executive secretary of that um, organization. She's based in uh, uh, Boise. And uh, Al Erkiaga from Boise as well, he was on the board. And um, when they were trying to promote these educational programs that they got these, this grant from, they um, ran into a lot of roadblocks. They, they realized um, that there was no network out there. They didn't have any contacts. They found it very difficult to reach out to the Basque community in the Western United States to promote um, this new program that they got the uh, grant for. And uh, this led to getting a handful of people from different areas to come and meet in Reno. And in those meetings, the idea of a federation that could be used you know, to facil 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 facilitate communication and facilitate uh, collaborative uh, projects um, was uh, born and those first meetings were held in uh, uh, Reno and Sparks, uh, Nevada in uh, 1973. Um, Al Erkiaga was nominated the first president, the leader of uh, this group and uh, Miren um, was the uh, f first uh, secretary. And they, um, with I think a total of eight charter clubs, they got their articles of incorporation and uh, NABA was incorporated in the state of Nevada, um, April 19th, 1974. And they started with eight clubs. And you know, at the time there was probably, you know, between 20 and 30 clubs out there, uh, but only eight, uh, you know, uh, signed up to, to start this. Of course you had, uh, um, the Boise Bass Center, Esquale Dunac, the Reno Bass Club, uh, San Francisco Bass Club, uh, Kern County, the Elko Bass Club, um, Ontario, Oregon, uh, Eli Bass Club in Nevada, and uh, Grand Junction, Colorado. Those were the charter members of the North American Bass Organization. So for the, so for the first three, four years, the main objective of NABO was to get more members to join. Um, and th this is a, a very challenging feat. Um, you can imagine at the time, um, you know, these, uh, these groups didn't know each other very well. S some of the clubs were, um, they were kind of um, lined up with a certain province in the Basque country. And, you know, as we know, there's, you know, there's kind of rivalries between the different provinces in the Basque country that kind of carried over uh, to the United States. Uh, the, the other big problem was, was politics. And uh, there was a lot, a lot of skepticism about the motivation for putting this federation together. And there's very strong, strong uh, things to, to navigate when you're trying to bring these organizations together. Um, at the time too, in the, in the 70s, the, uh, the independence group in the Basque country ETA, of course, was in full force and was uh, in the headlines uh, often. And there were uh, worries about, um, you know, their, their connection in, in all this. So, so the early years were, were very difficult for uh, NABO. And um, 
then they started getting activities uh, together. And that kind of really turned the corner. As they added activities, then um, in order to participate in those activities, you had to become a member. So the activities then over the years drew um, membership. And a lot of those activities remain today as our core activities. And I'll just go over, I'll go over some of those. And um, the first one was uh, handball, pilota. Oh, and um, uh, please, if you have a question, uh, I prefer, if, like, you have a question, ask it, you know, um, and, and we deal with it right in the context of exactly what we're talking about. So don't, so feel free to, you know, raise your hand or unmute yourself or get Kylie's attention and um, ask your question. So the uh, handball was one of the um, first activities that NABO organized for their members and they uh, organized um, several tournaments. And so that, that was popular. So, so some, some clubs joined for that because they wanted their handball players to be able to compete against other clubs in NABO uh, tournaments. And uh, uh, this, you know, like I said, very popular. And you can see here we have uh, men and women playing handball, uh, pala, different uh, disciplines. And just after a few years, um, the pilota organization, then they wanted to participate in international play. So they did a lot of work to do that. And um, they had uh, difficulties with that because they weren't a recognized uh, federation for amateur handball, but they were able to participate in a, in a war, in an international tournament. And, um, after that, the leader, the pilota leadership in NABO, they got together and they founded the United States Federation of Pilota. So I, I have their logo here, U S Federation of Pilota. So that's now a separate organization and, and, and they manage all participation from US players in international competition. So that was a pretty big uh, accomplishment. Um, and of course the pilota continues today. And we actually, our, our current pilota chairman is uh, Tony Uarte, who's uh, uh, from the uh, Bass Cultural Center in, in South San Francisco. So uh, thanks for joining uh, Tony. Um, another activity that NABO started to, uh, you know, again, let's get these clubs joining NABO, uh, was um, Moose and organizing an annual Moose tournament, which, be, which would basically crown a U.S. champion. And uh, each club would have some type of qualifying tournament on their own. And then whoever won their qualifying tournament would then uh, be eligible to represent their NABO member club at the NABO national uh, tournament. And um, th this started, I believe it was 1977 and just, it just took off. And, and um, just two years later, um, an international tournament was uh, started, 1979. So the winner of the NABO tournament could then represent the United States at the international uh, tournament. And that's, again, that's been going on, um, you know, since then. Um, it, okay, this is the first year that the international tournament is not going to happen because of the COVID virus. But uh, Moose is really, one, I think it is the most popular NABO activity. Um, all the clubs, if you add up all the participants in all the clubs for their qualifying tournaments, it's, it's like 600 uh, people that... Uh, uh, playing tournaments uh, annually to, to try and qualify for the uh, NEBO uh, Moose Finals. And th there was e there's even been some clubs that have formed uh, specifically to um, participate uh, in this tournament. So um, very, very successful and, and it, and it uh, continues. And let's see, I'll go to the next activity. So um, this is another program that was started in the 70s. This is really NABO's, I would say, I, I call it our flagship activity. It's the um, annual summer camp, Uda Leku. It, it was formerly known as uh, Music Camp. 
in the in the seventies, and this is where um, a club volunteers to host this camp, and it, it rotates through uh, these regions that NABO has set up amongst their members. And um, you have to be again, you have to be if your child wants to participate in this, the parents have to be members of a club that is a member of NABO. So again, there's there's that that link to uh, being part of the NABO. And uh, in, in this program, um, you know, kids that get together from uh, all areas of the, of the country, some even come from the, the Basque country. And, you know, they, they, uh, it's a two week camp. And uh, during the week, they have classes, uh, you know, language class, moose, dance, culture, um, depending on the low, on the hosting club, they might have uh, handball or maybe they'll have soccer or rugby, you know, some, some kind of sport uh, they'll have. Uh, history, um, Shistu is always uh, uh, on the agenda, the, the three hold uh, flute. And then, you know, each hosting club can, they can kind of modify the standard curriculum to uh, uh, whatever they, um, you know, they want to have. Uh, a couple years ago, there was a uh, Bersolari uh, workshop that some of the kids uh, participated in. Versolaris are the bass singers that do improvised poetry to uh, to songs. Then at the end of the two weeks, the kids uh, do a final performance uh, for mainly for the parents that, that are coming at the end of the two weeks to uh, pick them up. And uh, Udaleko has been very popular uh, when the uh, signups go out. Usually it's um, it's um, uh, early spring and it, it gets filled up within a, a couple hours. Uh, depending on the, on the, on the uh, hosting club will dictate how many uh, kids they can take. So it varies from 40 to 50 kids to 100 kids. The age ranges from uh, 10 to 15. And um, the other great benefit of Udaleku um, is you, know, you get these kids from different areas. They come together. They spend two weeks together. Sometimes they're, they're living in the same household. Oh, yeah, that's that's the other thing is that uh, the kids are hosted by families. So the so the hosting club organizes families to volunteer to take in these kids uh, during that those uh, two weeks. So these so a lot of these so these kids they develop these friendships, um, you know, from from across different clubs, different states, and it. Um, Sometimes you know lifetime friendships uh, develop. We've had we've had some marriages here and there. Um, so uh, Udaleku, uh, one of the NABO's uh, flagship uh, programs, it's, and it's uh, continuing to uh, uh, go go very strong. Okay. Um, then we have the uh, NABO convention. So th this is the annual. A meeting that uh, NABO has. They, they meet three times a year. This is the annual summer um, meeting. And in the early days of NABO, the, the NABO convention was just a meeting, you know, usually in Reno. Um, and it was the convention. It was the in the summertime. They did their meeting. They elected the officers. And that was pretty much it. In 1979, that changed. Um, the NABO convention was hosted by the uh, San Francisco Bass Club in, in San Francisco, and they actually uh, had the convention at Fort Mason, which is a, a space um, just right, very close to the Golden Gate Bridge and near the Marina District. And um, so it, it turned into a festival. So it was a NABO convention slash festival. So we had uh, dance groups from uh, all different clubs uh, from the Western U.S. Uh, participate. They had uh, exhibits. And they, they kind of reinvented what the NABO convention is. And that, that's kind of what it's been since then. And um, each year, a NABO member volunteers to host the NABO convention. They usually do it during their festival. So we have our convention, and then we have the, the, that uh, club's festival. So for example, here, I have photos from the June 2018 NABO convention in uh, Winnemucca. We had our meeting. Um, on a Friday, then we enjoy the uh, festival during the weekend. And because it's the NEBO convention, you know, we, 
we get a few more groups that will come out, dance groups, uh, other uh, folkloric performers, uh, bersolaris, um, a lot of uh, vendors, you know, bring uh, bass souvenirs, some uh, art displayed. Um, so th this is uh, every year, the uh, NABO convention. It, it, it um, for the big clubs, it, um, they, they like to um, uh, mark an anniversary with it. Like we were in Bakersfield last year and that was Bakersfield, Bakersfield's 75th anniversary. So they wanted to have that as the NABO convention to have that NABO element uh, there and uh, you know, to kind of add to it. And then in some situations, um, for example, Buffalo, when we have our convention in Buffalo, and I think we've had it there for six times, uh, Buffalo, uh, when we have our convention there, it, it brings um, a tremendous economic impact because of all the people that, you know, all the delegates and performers that descend upon Buffalo and uh, they, they love it. And um, like I said, it, it's, it's one of their, so, some of the stores, their, their best uh, economic years are, are the years where there's a NABO convention in Buffalo. Uh, this year's convention, of course, is like, like everything else. It was supposed to be in New, New London, Connecticut, uh, but in, um, uh, tomorrow. Yeah, it was supposed to be there to, tomorrow, um, but of course got uh, canceled and uh, we're hoping to reschedule there uh, next year, uh, being hosted by the Rhode Island uh, Bass Club. Quiet group, is it, everybody still there? Uh, I, th I think I saw my, uh, my cousin. Uh, she usually has lots of questions, but uh, maybe she's saving it for later. Uh, um, NABO has a calendar uh, that, again, is, uh, all, these, all these activities, they started in the 70s, and um, uh, th there are core activities that we, that, that we continue. It's that whole Basque thing about, you know, continuing the legacy of uh, your predecessors. And uh, I think uh, just like the, all the Bass Clubs, we're, we, um, we cherish doing that. Um, the calendar is um, it's more of a promotional activity just to promote NABO. Um, some clubs uh, sell it for fundraisers. And this has been uh, uh, pretty successful. And we get people just to submit photos, usually of uh, Bass events in the United States sometimes some Basque events in the, the Basque country, sometimes in uh, South America. And we have an editor that puts that all together. And then what we, all, what we also do is, um, for example, this is uh, August uh, 2020. And on the left-hand side there, we're promoting a, a film, the film of the month, uh, promoting Basque cinema. Um, we've been doing that for a couple of years. Before that, we were promoting books, the book of the month. We did that for you know, three, four years. Um, to kind of add an educational element um, to the calendar. And usually you can get that at your local club or directly from uh, NABO. I know the Bass Museum um, uh, gift shop uh, sells them. Another uh, core activity is the uh, Eshqual Cantari uh, Eguna. The, the Day of the Basque Singer. And this event traditionally has been hosted uh, by the Garnerville Bass Club uh, on one year and then the following year in uh, Rockland, uh, California. So we've, we've been kind of um, having that format. Usually it's in Rockland uh, in early October. And then when it goes to back to Garnerville, it's in uh, August. And this gives people a chance, just anybody to sign up and get up on stage and be a star uh, for an afternoon um, and sing their favorite song. Um, and we also, we usually get uh, uh, Bersolaris to come out. Like we, here we have uh, on the lower uh, left-hand corner, we have uh, Johnny Curichet from uh, South San Francisco uh, singing uh, Bersos, which are improvised uh, poetry. And here, here we have, uh, um, um, you know, a, a proud dad, you know, with, with his daughter and they're singing the song. And um, here we have Martin uh, Echemendi, longtime um, uh, MC of the Eshkol Kantari Eguna. And from time to time, uh, we'll, we'll invite uh, singers from the Basque country to, to participate as well. 
And here, here's a photo of uh, Eramun uh, Matikorena, who's a famous folk singer from uh, uh, Baigori, and uh, uh, Mikel Marquez. Um, I think he's from uh, Gipuzkoa. So they, they came out one year and they, uh, they just kind of jumped in and, and participated with uh, everybody else. And this, this is um, uh, just one of those hands-on um, events, you know, people just, just, just jump on stage and uh, off you go. Eshkol Kantari Eguna. And speaking of bass songs, the, uh, since 2000, uh, NABO has had a, a Basque language uh, program headed by Martin Gokoechia, who's a, a Bersolari himself from Rock Springs, uh, Wyoming. And um, the purpose of this, of this committee is to uh, promote uh, the teaching of the Basque language in NABO uh, member clubs, to help facilitate that, help with curriculum, um, try to give some uh, positive energy and motivation. And we're, uh, we, we partner with the uh, Echipade Institute in the Basque Country, and they provide uh, financial assistance, uh, curriculum, and uh, other uh, materials. And we have uh, Sonia Casagnon, who's a, our Esquadra coordinator. So she, she's the person that uh, kind of day in, day out, uh, helps uh, facilitate these programs. And then, then we have some uh, programs where we can um, uh, teach remote learners who aren't near a Bass Club that can't, can't go to a, um, a building. Um, so we have, um, we have teachers that uh, do virtual teaching. Um, so that, that's, that's uh, worked out pretty well too. Hey, Pauline. Uh, yes. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of babysitting right now, but I'll just mention while you're talking about those Uskara uh, classes that um, if anyone here is interested in those, we're gearing up to start them uh, in the fall. We usually start the week after Labor Day. And uh, if you're interested or you want to find out more or anything, you can always fill out the registration that's on the Bass Museum website uh, under the Learn tab. And we would be happy to uh, hook you up with a class. So just as a little kind of shameless plug there, if anyone is interested in overtaking classes, that's getting ready to start. And it'll all be online this year. So if you don't, if you're not at a club or um, you haven't had those resources available before, they are probably available now. So, and I know you can all work Zoom, so there's no excuse. <laughs> Great. So, all right, I'll log off now. <laughs> okay, then, yeah, an another, um, you know, of course, uh, NABO started, you know, because there was a communication problem. And one of the things that they did right off the bat was have a, a newsletter and um, there were different newsletters at different times. Um, the, the last hard copy uh, newsletter was uh, uh, Hisketa uh, from 1990 till about uh, the early 2000s. And these were uh, published um, two, three, four times a year, depending on what was going on. And then they would just, they would be sent to the, the clubs and the clubs could then forward it to their members if, if they chose to. And um, uh, yeah, in the early 2000s, uh, we transitioned to uh, an online uh, newsletter. And um, it's actually a, a weekly, it's called uh, Astero. I'm sure some of you have probably already uh, subscribed to it. And it's um, just a, a weekly uh, bulletin that goes out every Wednesday night with just some information about uh, things that are going on in the Bass community. So you, you can go to the NEBO website. If you, if you haven't signed up for it, you can go there, uh, click Estero, and then you'll see instructions on how to sign up for it. And it'll drop into your uh, mailbox uh, every uh, Wednesday night. So here's the current, um, the current one talking about um, the virtual mass uh, that's happening uh, uh, this uh, Sunday or actually this, this is from last week, uh, August. Oh yeah, yeah, August 15th, uh, this Sunday. 
and uh, Las Vegas' uh, postponement. So that, that's uh, Astero. And uh, another uh, uh, program, um, this is kind of more recent, uh, are uh, cultural tours. So with uh, this great communication network that any NEBO has, um, it can be used to put together uh, a tour of visiting artists. Um, and we've uh, done this on several occasions. We've had some uh, assistance from the Basque government. And here are some examples, some uh, folk uh, musicians, Calacan, uh, 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 Juan Marie Beltran, some uh, uh, Basque rock and rollers, Berry Charac and Betegari. And just, just recently, just last year, we had a, um, a Basque film tour. And this was in the spring of 2019 with a brand new film that had come out um, in the fall of uh, 2018, uh, Dunsa. And uh, NEBO organized a, a six uh, club uh, tour uh, with the director, uh, Telmo uh, Esnal. And he had uh, a couple of the dancers accompany him for the, the Q&A. So the, the film was screened and then they did a Q&A afterwards. And, Here's a shot of uh, folks um, in uh, Boise uh, watching the screening there. And uh, Bass Cinema is kind of an, uh, a newer offering that NABO has uh, pro uh, offered. And I'll, I'll kind of get into that just a, a little bit. It's been, Bass Cinema has been around, you know, since, since a film. And it, it really started to develop, to develop um, in the post-Franco era, uh, when the Basque autonomous community was able to get funding. So uh, it kind of evolved um, strongly since the 1980s. And, and just really recently has gone even to uh, higher levels. And more and more films now are being produced in the Basque uh, language in, in the last uh, 10 years. You can count on uh, nowadays two to, two to three, four, films every year being produced in the, in the Basque language. And they're high quality films. They're very well produced, well written. And uh, from uh, part of NABO's educational front, uh, we've, uh, we have a collection of Basque films and we make those available free of charge to uh, uh, the, really, really the general uh, public. And here's an example of a film from a few years ago, Loreac, uh, Flowers. And it, it was a drama about um, a, uh, a woman, a main character here, who, who mysteriously gets flowers delivered to her um, residence uh, every day. A very uh, interesting film. Uh, it did so well and uh, was uh, you know, critically acclaimed that the Spanish uh, Film uh, Institute uh, submitted it to the Academy Awards for their submission to the Foreign Language Academy Award. So that was the first time the Spanish Film Academy had chosen a, a film that wasn't in Spanish uh, to do that. Um, and this, this, uh, this team here, this, these two directors, uh, they put a string of very successful films uh, together. Uh, the, the one after that one was called uh, Andia. Uh, this, this film won 10 uh, Goya Awards. Those are the Spanish uh, Oscars. So it's um, really uh, quality products. If you go onto our website, uh, we have a catalog of films that are available. And you just, you uh, can open up the catalog, you can click the trailer, you can read about the film. Uh, we have all different genres, documentaries, uh, comedies, uh, dramas. And um, we'll get the film to you. Uh, video file or, or mail you the DVD, we just ask you to mail the DVD back. And uh, I've been talking for a while, so I think what I, I'm, I'm just going to show you a trailer um, of a, a Basque film. Hopefully, this will work. <laughs> Está bueno a más. Curiosen, bueno, un día resumí Castilla, son tan más urtecos, vaya, bueno, la torre urtea copa, mía mi ruta comienza algo. Está mucho, muy bien la lengua, mía mía. Mamá, 
that's when they brought over the young players that became the stars of the 1970s. I used to go there in the late 60s, and the people from the city, a lot of my friends, they knew the players. They were betting on the players. They had to know who the players were. So the kids immediately identified with the young players, and highlight took off, like a bullet took off. Boom. Miami Highlight was getting 10,000, 12,000, 15,000. Because many people stand as sitting watching the game. You know, they couldn't wait to come back the next day. They couldn't wait to hear who, what players we recruited for next year. It's what I've been waiting for. A lot of cash, a lot of cash in Miami back in those days. Just watch Miami Vice. Yeah. <laughs> About 130 members of the newly formed International Highlight Players Association went on strike on April 14th, uh, alleging unfair labor practices by management. So Highlight could have been spread all around the United States, but just missed by a couple of votes. No, no, el Gaya la es la locura, la locura. Es tan bonito y hermoso que está considerado un arte. No hay, no hay deporte más difícil, no existe en el mundo, ni más vistoso que el Gaya la. Es, es, olvídate, ¿no? que el rey de los deportes. <risa> Hey, Highlight Blues. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Okay, so uh, we have our Basque Film Library. Hope uh, that worked out okay. I, I, I want to take a, I wanted to speak about um, great partners that NEBO has in the, the Basque government. You've, you've, you've heard me mention them uh, a few times, and sometimes when people hear Basque government, you're know, not sure really what that means. But um, if, if, you, if you look at the um, uh, the, the Basque uh, country, um, there's the, there's the three provinces that are um, north of the Pyrenees, and then there's uh, Navarre, which is its own autonomous community, and then the uh, the Basque autonomous community, the that is governed by the Basque government makes up the three provinces of uh, Biscaya, Guipuzcoa, and uh, Araba. And they have a, a department that has relations with uh, the uh, Basque clubs around the world, the entire Basque diaspora. And they uh, have uh, grants, they help us uh, financially, they help other clubs financially. They come to our meetings at least uh, once a year and they're very supportive. There's no political agenda. It's all it's all about uh, perpetuating uh, Basque culture and uh, identity. And um, uh, Gorka Alvarez, he's in charge of uh, uh, Basque relations uh, uh, globally. And then uh, Benano Oregi, he's uh, assigned to the United States, and he, he's had that position I think over 20 years. So uh, we've developed a really good relationship uh, with uh, our friends uh, at the Basque government. And then every four years, they uh, invite representatives from the 25 countries where they have Basque clubs registered with them for a World Congress of Basque uh, Communities Abroad. Uh, they usually ha have it in uh, Bilbao or, uh, or uh, Donostia. We just had one last, uh, last fall in September and a great opportunity to learn more about uh, the, the Basques and other uh, countries and to, uh, you know, the Basque government and just to see what's going on over there. So I uh, just wanted to uh, 
say a few words about the Basque government and uh, how appreciative we are of their collaboration with the uh, mission of the North American Basque organization. And um, I just want to talk a little bit about the, the structure, you know, because uh, sometimes it's it become a little abstract because uh, there's, you know, there's no building. Um, you know, we, there's a logo, there's people running around, uh, you know, there's uh, tournaments. Um, but um, each, each club that's a member of NEBO, they appoint uh, two voting representatives to represent that club at uh, NEBO meetings. And uh, those two representatives uh, become, uh, by virtue of that appointment by their club, they become a member of the board of directors of the uh, NEBO uh, corporation. And uh, let's see, yeah, yeah, today, um, <laughs> you can't have a meeting, right, without, without a dog barking nowadays. So uh, I don't have a dog. I just have, ha I had that on tape. I just wanted to, just to make everybody feel at home on a virtual meeting. Um, Today we have uh, 41 uh, members, 41 clubs uh, in 10 states, and we have two clubs in uh, Canada, in Montreal and uh, Vancouver. So we, we meet three times a year, and uh, we're usually between 20 and uh, uh, 35, 40 uh, members that are able to make uh, the meetings. And uh, we have our uh, officers. So. Uh, uh, myself as president, uh, Annie Gabika is the Bass Museum director. She's the, our vice president. And uh, Mai Petrosek, from, uh, originally from uh, Chino, and she's uh, in Colorado nowadays, our uh, treasurer. And uh, uh, Kate Camino of uh, Reno, originally from uh, Wyoming, is our secretary and uh, facilitator. And then, oops. Um, and then... Uh, let me, let me move my, this bar here. Okay, yeah, then we have uh, all the different folks that run our different programs. Uh, so I, I, I talked about uh, Sonia Castagnon, Escuela coordinator. Uh, Mary Lou Urrutia does the calendars. Uh, John Esursa from Boise, um, he's the uh, educational coordinator. Martin Gogoetia from Rock Springs, Wyoming, the Escuela uh, chairperson. Uh, Mai Petrosek, uh, finance committee. Uh, Lisa, Cor Cor Lisa Korkostegi from Reno, originally from Ontario, Oregon, our uh, webmaster. And um, Esqual Cantaria Guna, uh, the people in charge there, Noel Goyanech of Rockland and Anita Izoko of uh, Garnerville. And um, we have uh, uh, a, a new person, uh, Michaela Gokwecha, Martin's daughter. So she's uh, starting a, a new effort for musical uh, culture. You might have seen some of her uh, YouTube videos that she's put out. I think Tony's on the call, Tony Huarte. He's the, uh, our chairperson for the Pilota. Well, actually, he's the, the program director of uh, Pilota. And then uh, Valerie Arecha is in charge of uh, the annual uh, pork sausage uh, contest, uh, Cheriki. And her and Kate are also the core uh, chairpersons for the uh, Udaleku program. And uh, Gina Espinal. Uh, she does, uh, um, she manages the uh, junior moose activities. And I saved um, Pierre Echaren for last. He's, he's our, our moose tournament. And yet you see a picture, the picture there of uh, Pierre Echaren from uh, San Francisco. Uh, and he, he was one of the people in that meeting in 1973 on March 9th. So he, he's been involved with NABO before NABO was even incorporated. And he's been going strong for uh, 47 years. Um, and, there, and there's a lot of people in NABO who have made significant uh, commitments uh, like Pierre uh, over, the, over the decades. And it's, it's with, with their dedication and the dedication of the clubs that make the NABO events happen. The, um, they don't happen by themselves. They can only happen with a, a member organization taking on that event on behalf of the NABO, like the Udaleku or the, the handball tournaments are gonna to be hosted either in Bakersfield or Boise. Um, Udaleku, it's, uh, a club has to sign up for that and, and take on that big responsibility. So um, that's, how, that's how it works. That's why it's successful. And another, I think um, for me, a big 
success of um, NABO is um, the, the bringing of people together from varying Basque uh, heritages. And I, and I kind of alluded to, you know, these rivalries, you know, in the homeland, uh, the north, the south, uh, you know, th this province, that province, you know, sometimes there's, there's little rivalries. And um, uh, I think I think one of NEBO's biggest successes is to kind of uh, meld all that to, together through all these activities where we're coming together constantly, we're collaborating with each other, uh, working together, and um, you know we're we're uh, we're Basque, and it doesn't matter if we're, our family came from uh, Lower Navarre, from uh, Biscaya, from Gipuzkoa, from Navarre itself, whatever, uh, we're, we're Basque, and I think that's been a a big uh, success for um, for NABO. We're also uh, financially, uh, we have an interesting structure where we've been able to take all our educational uh, finances. So the, the, those are the, the for Udaleku, Pilota, um, Esquada, all those educational financial resources are organized into a f uh, educational fund that um, NABO back in the 70s was able to get uh, a special 501c3 tax exempt status from the IRS. So any donations to those um, activities are uh, tax deductible. So that, that's been a, a help in the fundraising uh, for NABO over the years. Um, I've, I've been going on and on wait, waiting for uh, someone to ask a question, but I guess um, uh, I don't know if anybody has any uh, questions uh, at this point. I think I've covered um, mo most things. Of course, I can't cover everything. Um, and I um, want to thank Kylie and uh, Annie again at the Bass Museum. Yeah. And hopefully, maybe, maybe there's some questions out there. Um, I got a question. So if somebody wanted to become involved in... NABO directly, how would they do that? Or can they do that? I, like, is there opportunity for that type of um, thing? Or is it just collaboration with clubs? Yeah, collaboration with clubs. I mean, if someone saw something that was going on with NABO and they thought, wow, that's really, that really says something to me, they would just contact uh, NABO and then they get involved uh, that way. Just go to the website. There's uh, yeah. info at nabass.eus. And um, yeah, no, I don't email. know. So sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you can talk to someone, you know, like maybe, maybe you'll, uh, a delegate or someone from NABO will be there. You can uh, talk to them or someone from your club that knows about NABO, talk to them about it. Yeah, that's like what we did last year with the film, uh, the film event. It worked great. But, and yeah, for anyone else too, if you haven't checked out the NABO website, it has so many resources on it. Um, you can really spend a lot of time uh, looking around and reading up on stuff. It's a great website with a lot of stuff. All right, I've got the sun like straightened my eyes where I'm sitting, sorry about that. <laughs> well, all right, this is well, your I, 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 I think, I think Tony, Tony, I think Tony had a question, Tony Huarte, or, or maybe he might have a comment. Um, Tony might Either have way, a comment. You uh, just unmute yourself and <laughs> go. There he is. <laughs> Hey, uh, hey everyone. Um, well, first of all, I want to thank Philippe. I mean, he does a fantastic job. Philippe, Nishker, how uh, I like what you did there with your last name, you know? I was like, wait, oh, wait, wait. Yeah, uh, the, the, the little fox. That, 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 that. <laughs> um, and I think that's, that could be a fun activity. You know what, why don't, you know, I think everyone could kind of have a, a look at their last names and what does your last name mean, right? So, my last name, for example, means, you know, there's, there's water and something between the water. It's called, uh, water means island. I think that's, that's, that's interesting. So uh, that's, that's the first thing I, I, I really like what you did there. Um, yeah, I'm uh, just like Philippe mentioned, uh, I am helping out with the, with the pilota, the bass pilota, uh, as a chairperson, Malvo, I just started. Um, but like I said, uh, I knew this, this presentation was to be helpful. I always, learn uh, a lot of things. Uh, so I just want, yeah, if, uh, for example, anyone interested in pilota, there's a, there's a pilota at nabo. I think it's 
us.com or something yeah there's a yeah feel free to send yeah. uh, any there you go thanks Philippe. uh yeah there's a there's an email um not only for pilota but for any event uh back to kylie's question you know if you guys want to be involved or or learn something more about it feel free to reach out to us there's there's, there's a lot of uh interesting people out there and um and uh yeah we're just here to you know continue with uh with the, our, our bassness and just uh, share it out and, and can keep this going. So, Very good, yeah. And then if, if uh, now I, I just kind of did a little sprinkling here of the history, but uh, we actually have a book on the history of NABO written by Argichu Kamua Chekopar. And so you can go onto the NAB, NABO website, and click history, and you can click it right here and it'll, it'll come up. And there's it's uh and it's a kind of book where you can kind of pick and choose you know different parts of the NABO and and, and their history, um, so that's uh, very good. And I, I know did I see I thought oh there I have a I have a relative here my my cousin Marie Oaks so I'm going to call people out, uh, and um, I know Marie uh, of course I call her Babette. Oh, uh, and I'm, and I'm going to embarrass her, but uh, maybe Babette has a question. I don't know. Uh, she might have walked away, maybe. Uh, uh, I'm here. Oh, 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 there you are. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm interested in looking into this website. I've learned a lot tonight. Oh, good. Especially the, the movies and the history. No, really, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look into this. Glad I, glad I checked in. All right, great. Thank you. I bet, yeah, we'll, we'll see you soon. Oh, and I, I see Naya Uruti. Naya Uruti. Oh, um, yeah. I want to hear a comment from Naya. She's uh, one of our, our Zaspiat Bat dancers in San Francisco. Yeah. I'm doing an essay about Basque history and like about Franco and how the immigrants came over to California, specifically the Bay Area. And yeah, I just thought this would be interesting to just learn more. Great, great. Um, uh, so th th is this like a report you're working on or is it, what kind of project is it? Yeah, it's like a research paper. Mm. And yeah, it's like 4,000 words or 7,000 words, something like that, yeah. Good. Girl, do we have the resources for you? I'm gonna put a website in the chat. Well, we'll, we'll have Naya do one of these presentations when, when she's done. Yeah, yeah, when I'm finished. <laughs> so it's Bassing, California. I think that's right. Uh, dot .eus, but if you search Bassing, California, you'll uh, find out. And there is a, um, we literally, like two weeks ago, opened an exhibit about um, the Bass story in California and the Bay Area, how they came there from the pioneers all the way to what's happening right now. So if you go to that website, though, it's got just, there's a couple spots where they might be missing a bit of information, but I bet you could do a 40,000 word <laughs> research paper on all the information that is okay. there. So Thank definitely you know, check that out. that out. Or go to our um, museum website as well, and there's that Bass in California exhibit. You can even email us if you need specific information. We probably got it. Um, you are doing a very well-timed research paper because that is just what we published a whole bunch of information on. So. You are in luck. <laughs> that is a good question. Somebody Great. else asked also, um, they mentioned that they wish there is more um, Basque clubs and organizations on the East Coast of the US. And I know that's always kind of been a thing if you're, you know, Basque on the East Coast, it, the clubs are a little bit more spread out and there's just kind of less presence than there is in the West Coast. Um, and I'm just wondering, is NABO an organization you could go to if you are interested in maybe starting a club with your community? I mean, as far as I know, you don't need very many people to have a club, right? Uh, yeah, we, we've received inquiries like that before, just, just general information, you know, how, how the steps involved. Um, and yeah, the, yeah, the East Coast, yeah, there's just a handful of clubs, and you know, there's there's some organizations. Uh, I know, I think there's a Atlanta Bass Club. There's, I think, uh, one in Texas, but I'm not sure how formal uh, they are. There was one in Miami for a while, but I, I think they've they've kind of um, 
been out of it for a little bit. Uh, there's, of course, New York and um, uh, Rhode Island, uh, M Montreal. Um, and what if you wanted to find a club like you on the website, there's a list of all the clubs that are a part of your organization, right? Right. Yep. So you can, they're organized by state. And then if they have a web page, you can uh, uh, click on to their um, uh, web page. And, uh, or, or uh, some of them don't have web pages, they just have a Facebook page. Right. And you could uh, check that out. Here's uh, Vancouver, Zaspiat Bass Society. Um, so that's all, all, all right there. If, Ooh. if you're trying, if you're trying to contact someone and it's not working out, you can contact any BO. We'll, we'll put people in touch together. Yeah. I, I had another question about how to find, you know, how to connect with Basque in other parts of the United States and as well. And, you know, if you're, um, if you're in a part of the US without a club or something like going to NABO to find that nearest club or just emailing them directly and they probably hook you up with somebody and the museum, we know a lot of people as well um, and can maybe, you know, help you out. And uh, the NABO website has like a whole ton of information. And if you can't find something there, check the Bass Museum website as well. Uh, we might have some some stuff and uh i'll just say, i mean these are both the open door organizations so sending an email and making an inquiry will never hurt we're always here to help people out so yeah i think if you go up and then you go to the research tab um there's all sorts of stuff in there you could, you could the community history has some kind of more historic stuff um the genealogy resources can help you if you're looking for genealogy. There's lots, there's lots there, but anyways. Okay. So one last question, anybody else, are you going to call out one more, <laughs> one more uh, lucky person or are they off the hook? Um, oh, oh, I see Al Erkiaga. Al Erkiaga is in the house. Oh, Al, okay. Are you there? Al Erkiaga is the founder of NABO, the first oh, president. You better say something, Al. <laughs> You're on the spot. He's, he's um, well, of course, the, all, the Boise folks, I mean, he, he started so many things. I know he was involved with the starting of the choir, the Onkari dancers, NABO, um, really a remarkable person. And, um, well, maybe it could be an imposter too. Uh, oh, I see Martin Beshok, Martin Beshok. He's from uh, Chino and he lives in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I, I see him in uh, San Francisco, the center. And, Hello. Uh, hey, Philippe. Hey, how's it going? Great presentation. Uh, I, are, are, are you in the witness, witness protection program? <laughs> no, I have a bunch of backlight. <laughs> but, um, I did have a question kind of building off for the helping out with NABO. Um, are there any certain groups within NABO that need more support? I'm sure most of them do, but because um, I'd, I'd like to help out. It's not, I don't have a specific area that I'd like to start. Just kind of help out wherever. Yeah, I mean, the, a lot of times is when like a, the, the NABO events having, you know, in your club, that's always great opportunities to help out um, or, or close by. Uh, like, you know, uh, it'll probably get, you know, postponed with the Eshkwal Cantari Guna is going to happen in Rockland in October. Right. Um, um, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, we'll stay in communication. And um, there's, yeah, like you said, there's, there's always something to do. Cool. Always opportunities to get involved. Okay, let's see. Is this still still holding out for Mr. Eric? Oh, it looks like he, he might have left. Okay. Sir. Well, that's all right. He's, he's being very humble. He's um, being humble. So that, that's that's good. That's fine. <laughs> Technology, anyways. 
a little tricky sometimes, but well, guys, um, you know, we're just a couple minutes past seven and we said we would last for about an hour. So if there's no burning questions, we can um, call it a night. Uh, unless there's something else, I'm going slow. So if somebody wants to say something, they can. Well, but. I, I see Jonelle uh, Krako and I, I haven't met her before, but we've had some email correspondence and she's been very helpful with uh, Aita Anton's um, Basque ministry uh, on a virtual level, and she's been really helping out uh, him organize that. And and now now we're getting it into Astero every week, so we can uh, get that information out so people can attend those ma masses uh, virtually. That um, means so much to a, a lot of people. So Janelle, uh, th thanks for all that effort. We appreciate it. You got one question in the chat, Philippe. Do you see that one? Uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, d uh, dances. Um, is that is that the one? Mm -hmm. uh, interested in, in the dances? Yeah. Um, well, it depends on where the person's at. I'm not sure what what, what geography they're they're in. Um, Do you mind? I see. Oh, people. yeah. Well, we would have had Hialdi, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, but, but everything's been canceled uh, this year. But yeah, every Bass Festival, there's always uh, dancing is a, a core event of any Bass Festival. Um, so a, a, any picnic, uh, you, most of them are going to have that. Oh, Michigan, yeah. Michigan's a little tough. Um, if, if you're looking to go somewhere to see dancing, you should definitely keep your eye on Hialdi next year because you will see more dancing than one ever needs to see in their life that week. And it obviously got postponed this year, but it's very comparable to the Basque Week in Argentina. It's another week-long big festival with lots of different things going on. Um, next year, it's going to be in Boise. It's always the last week of July. Um, but if you're missing your Basque Week, uh, Hialdi ought to give you a good fix. <laughs> yes, yeah, so subscribe to Estero and you'll, you'll see these events being promoted uh, uh, every week. You know, when we're back to normal. Um. Those are some great questions. All right. Well, I don't want to keep people too long. So. Okay, Kylie and uh, uh, Annie, thanks again for having me and uh, thanks everyone for uh, attending. And, yeah. Uh,